Reviewing all of the Hellfire Gala outfits from 2021 was quite an undertaking, but I loved the positive reception that I got on that video. So let's keep the train rolling and move right along into 2022. Hola, my name is X and I like to experiment with fashion as well as talk about whatever the hell I want on social media whenever I feel like it. And in this video, like I said, we're going to be reviewing the 2022 Hellfire Gala outfits. There's 21 total designs, which is honestly quite a refreshing change from the 64 designs that were available for review in the 2021 Gala. Speaking of the 2021 Gala, go ahead and check that video out if you haven't had an opportunity. Really got some great feedback, more along the lines of what I'm used to receiving. So I definitely wanted to keep the momentum going and that gave me a good foundation for how I'm going to review these Hellfire Gala looks moving forward. So let's go ahead and get into, I guess, a bit of the structure or criteria that I used. After taking a quick gander at the 2022 looks, I can feel confident in moving forward with Save the Day versus Slay the Day. Save the Day is if the outfits look a little more kind of typical superhero costume. And then Slay the Day is they absolutely dress to impress, high fashion serving, you know the deal. And as far as new heroes entering the mix, I'm still gonna loosely compare them to their original costumes or looks in the comic books. But for returning superheroes, I'm going to compare their outfit to 2021, just to see what kind of evolution and style that the designers were able to exercise for them. And honestly, it's as simple as that. So without further ado, let's get into the looks. Kicking things off with Iron Man, I will say that he is so lucky that that jacket is high tech and very interesting because otherwise the base of the outfit is pretty much just a t-shirt and jeans and some dress shoes. It's like you couldn't give us a little bit more than that, but honestly, given his personality style and that he kind of does his own thing and is a bit unapologetic about it, not surprising, but that jacket is high tech and true to the character. Technology that like, what it would, have we seen a fashion show or something like that? I think it's interesting. It's a slay the day. It would have been save the day if there was more armor, like suit kind of components, but we went Tony Stark route, which I think is good for the gala. Next is Spider-Man, absolutely save the day, right? This is just a suit with some really cool glowing elements. Particularly what I love are the geometric elements within the fingers and the bottom of the shoes or the feet. I don't know why we couldn't just get some really cool actual clothing items with those glowing elements within them. And I think we see a little bit more of that within 2023, not to spoil, but as far as 2022, like this is a really cool alternative skin, something that it would be nice to maybe see in a video game, downloadable content, right? But as far as like a gala, there really are no fashion elements to latch onto and real no depiction of some sort of like fashion energy either. It's just pretty standard superhero save the day. Forge, I'm gonna have to also give a save the day. When I look at the original outfit of the character, a lot of the same elements in the same place. The jacket's really cool. I love the kind of asymmetrical nature of it. The color palette is strong, but I don't know why there was such a need to kind of embellish so much more of like the plant or cyborg or other elements going on under the clothes. I feel like with some of the other characters, especially in 2021, they were given more standard kind of outfitting and even standard body types. I would have loved to see something just a bit more high class, more non-traditional superhero in this case. So save the day. But fortunately, we have Captain Marvel coming in with a much needed sleigh. We just need as much sleigh as we can get in 2022. Um, obviously, right off the bat, I love the crop. OK, and then a jacket of the shoulders. I don't know how many times I've said I love that combo of whether they're independent or combined together in, in an outfit. Obviously, a really cool effect to have like a shining star, starry sky lining of the jacket as well. And then the pants are also high waisted. I'm a sucker for those, too. I just think it's interesting how this outfit does kind of give a bit of a casual vibe. You could see this very much in something a bit more everyday, but I think the combination of such stylish clothing items makes for a great kind of statement look. And I also don't want to neglect the subtle but very striking gold accessories. They don't, they're not over the top. Iceman is also coming in with a cool and casual sleigh. What I like about this one for Iceman is it feels a bit more kind of practical, but also just way more pattern and interesting design going on. 2021 was also really cool and that was a sleigh the day. 
we got some very high fashion items with like the heels and that kind of interesting corset. Here I feel like in 2022, Iceman is giving us a bit more kind of standard men's suit silhouette, but I'm not opposed to that because we get a really deep plunging V-neck line almost all the way to the belly button. I love the little X design, and this is a signature element of this designer specifically, where it's like the X is like indicative of a belt or some sort of buckle that I think is really nice. And just the contrast between the lighter and the darker blue and the geometric patterns, just to make it feel like it is a full body suit. A little bit more tame, but still high fashion nonetheless. Even though I'm giving Havoc a slay the day, I have to say that I'm not disappointed, but I'm just a little surprised. In 2021, wow, that look pretty much stole the show in my opinion. And so I find it interesting that we're now getting a bit more of like what I would consider an athleisure style outfit. It's not so tight and typical superhero unitard to where I'm getting a full save the day vibe. But I would say that outside of the jacket and the interesting X buckle elements, I'm not really sure what else is the strong statement piece here. What I would love to have seen would be baggier pants. I would have loved to see a wide leg baggier pant that kind of scrunched at the bottom and that would have echoed the scrunched up sleeves and the sharp edges and shoulder pads in the jacket. That would have just added so much more balance and taken this out of athleisure high fashion and into a more genuine gala high fashion look. Jean Grey definitely came to slay the day. And I honestly like this version of her outfit versus 2021. 2021 still kind of borderline gave a unitard, femme fatale superhero vibe, but this one just with more of a skirt and some statement tool or sheer fabric definitely takes this to more of that couture high fashion state or status. Once again, we're getting also some very good gold detailing and kind of elements just to further elevate the look. There's also just a really unique design in her skirt. Could have seen a little more texture, to be honest with you. We're getting a lot of shape and silhouette. I would have liked maybe some texture, maybe a little more accessorizing too. Similar to Havoc, I'm also surprised to see that Sink had a bit of a styled downgrade. This is also such a very athleisure look. I just don't know why it went in this direction because I just feel like Sink's look from 2021 was so effortlessly chic. Like outside of a very statement kind of cardigan, we had what was pr a pretty standard outfit that just had enough accessorizing to elevate it to that kind of high fashion gala status. In this outfit, Outside of the kind of cool tails or like bit of skirt elements around the top, I don't know what else is very interesting. A bit of the neck or the collar of the top as well, but just the fit of the top and the fit of the pants. Overall color palette and how it's kind of one note. I'm just not getting nearly the same extent of fashion and accessorizing as we got in 2021, so save the day. But Steve Rogers coming in with an effortless slay the day. However, I really don't like that gray vest. I feel like it throws off a lot in this look and honestly prevents it from being as sharp as I think it could have been. I don't think there should have been a vest in general. But outside of that, I love the contrast in the dark red and blue pinstripes in the suit versus the brighter shades of red and blue in the actual jacket. A really unique contrast that I would have initially thought in my brain would clash, but in seeing it depicted, that's a really great relationship with the colors. The boot could also be different. It's just the boot and the vest that I think are taking me the most out of this one. But regardless, it's very much a sleigh. Sam Wilson is also a sleigh particularly because of the almost want to say like velvet collar or lapel and shoulders of the jacket, as well as the interesting collar or neck of the undershirt. Those are just, I mean, is this a really out of the box, crazy experimental look? No. And once again, they don't, oh, it doesn't, fashion doesn't always have to be that way. You can just innovate with different kind of fabric or textural elements outside of the ordinary, just to make something feel a bit more novel and a bit more statement. And I think that that's ultimately what this is doing, paired with an interesting pair of glasses that I think just kind of ties back to the root color of the base of the jacket, an easy slay.
Emma Frost, just by the nature of who she is as a character, is an obvious slay the day. I will say that I like the introduction of some gold elements within her look. I think sticking to just white and like blue is pretty on the nose for her character. And I like the peaks of body, body confidence in this one. The cutouts are very nice and honestly quite flattering. But somehow I can't help but to feel like this is still a bit flat compared to the really cool textures that we got in the designs from 2021. This is a bit of a downgrade and de-evolution once again, in my opinion, almost to the extent to which this could be borderline considered an alternative kind of suit outfit, especially when we look at what she typically wears, which is still fashion, but is very much like a superhero costume. So I don't know, slay the day, right? I mean, once again, we have a great display of body confidence and I don't mind as much of an open chest here because of the nature of the character and maybe being a bit more aquatic in that regard. I would have just liked to see more accessorizing. Like why can't we? I think what happened was a lot of the designers exchanged detailed fashion accessorizing for more artistic cover art, which is cool. I know the sole point of this wasn't only fashion, but I just can't help but to feel like there's some missed opportunities here. The scale suit is a great textural element. You don't always see this in innovation and design, but it just feels like it's kind of sitting there unaccompanied. I don't know. I would have loved to see some gold chains, a gold belt just to tie back to the trident, you know, just really bring out more gold. When in doubt, throw some gold on it. So Rogue is also a slay the day, but compared to 2021, which had so much more attitude and edge, and I feel like was a little more true to the character and still had enough of that superhero kind of outfit spin, this one feels a bit dated for her and kind of ages her in a way that I don't know how I feel about that. I love that we're getting some great texture and dimension with the fur and the lace. I think the fur is really what's taking me out of it the most. I would have liked maybe to see less fur and just focus on that great lace sheer design. That would have still added some of that kind of edgier, sexier twist that still makes her feel kind of youthful and badass. So for Black Widow, I debated, I went back and forth. She kind of gave me Rachel Summers vibes where there's enough of like some fashion elements like maybe within the heels and just throughout the outfit that this could be a slay the day. Also kind of like Storm where I feel like Storms was kind of in 2021, similar to what she typically wears, but you could just like add one item and it would be an easy slay the day. This just still feels so save the day. It's like a one piece bodysuit. Once again, we're getting into that unitar territory. The heels are really great. The veil is really great. The braid is really great. Nice striking high fashion elements, but the majority of the outfit is the suit. And if the suit doesn't feel like there's anything else going on outside of the design to save the day, right? But She-Hulk said, wrap it up because I'm here to slay the day. What in the world? And this is just such a great depiction of a strong woman with a great physique, still showing off what is very feminine and flattering body confidence, but still really fits the environment, the theme and the context. I'm loving the top and the fact that it's like high-waisted pants once again, that just really complements her silhouette with incredible diamond or silver details. I love a dangling like silver belt thing. I don't know why I get so, so tickled. The heels are great. And then I just love the bagginess of the pants as well. And then the just the fingertip gloves, such small nuances that makes this feel like sporty and chill, but also just like super high fashion and chic at the same time. Such a beautiful balance, great duality. I'm obsessed. I am so proud of Cyclops or the designer for Cyclops in this regard. I don't know what happened in 2021 to save the day. Nothing really out of the box. This came through with some great, with some great Asian inspired fashion touch. This is a really popular silhouette and just stacked layered outfit that a lot of high fashion men get into. We just have great belting. We have great fabrics. We have great color palette. Loving the lighter blue belt compared to the overall darker blue jackets that are going on. So much dimension, so much texture, lots of drama as well. And I just really love to see a legacy character just kind of get 
much better high fashion treatment like this versus something that's too on the nose save the day. So obviously a slay. Even though Gambit's outfit is also a bit more of, I would say a casual reimagining of the outfit compared to 2021, this is still a slay the day because of the cool pants. Like the way that they kind of give a bit of a hip cut out, but then kind of wrap around his lower back is so interesting. The body confidence is quite a bit, but hey, it's right up his alley. I love the necklaces, it kind of helps frame the chest well. And I really love that hooded top. Just the two tails and the way the hood is. It feels lightweight, but also sharp and masculine at the same time. I would have gone with different boots. That's what kind of gives me a little more of the save the day vibe. I wish we could have just gone with, once again, a standard like fashion boot. It could have still been knee high, but but when we get into like armored knee pads and boots, it kind of takes away from the fashion element in my perspective. But all of these elements, I think, are working together really cohesively. Magic is overall mostly serving save the day, but there's some interesting kind of high fashion elements that do take it away from a standard superhero look. But even with that said, I wouldn't expect to see this going down a runway. I wouldn't really expect to see anybody kind of show up to a gala in anything really resembling this high fashion couture cosplay similar to i think like what exodus and mr sinister had in 2021 as far as my lens and my evaluation i'm looking definitely for more fashion than more superheroes would have been great again if there was just more feminine armored demon elements that were still kind of like discernible fashion items with the cool sword prop but this is a save the day scarlet witch has one of those looks that kind of ooh, has that almost like unitard body fit but i feel like just with the unique glittery galactic pattern in the front of the fabric that ties to the heel of the shoes so unique and very fashion and i think overall just the headpiece and the dangled like jewel like elements some sheer lace kind of touches and nuances it just feels like there's some other elements in here that don't feel so rigid and sharp and plastic i feel like we're getting lightweight premium quality fabrics with nice luxurious design and detail bonus points if there was maybe just a few more extra prominent ruby or striking gem accessories dr doom came to shut it the f down what is going on here honestly him and colossus wow i'm floored this is peak male luxury royalty fashion we're getting absolute presence in aura here we're getting strong dramatic fur and framing and silhouette we're getting bold strong gold details especially in those boots i want those boots so much and i know i've commented on how a lot of like the tight fitting pants give like muscular unitard outfit but in this case Everything else is absolutely carrying that weight and there is no detraction from the fashion here. The pattern, the relationship between the gold and the green, the posture, the everything here is screaming, watch out, here I come. And Wolverine's coming in for another Slay the Day or Talon, I'm loving the outfit. Almost feels a little relaxed to me and this is so petty. Based on the combat boots, I was, I feel like a flat combat boot at a gala, like, can we get at least a little more of a pronounced heel? Like, give me a heeled platform combat boot. There's plenty of those. I feel like that just would have been extra chic here, but otherwise we're getting great design that's true to the character's kind of concept and vibe with those cutouts, loving the skirt and just the sheer elements. It's almost like a futuristic material, but just the way it's collected and bunched and surrounded by these really cool stacked and layered accessories that just dangle and add more drama and dimension is perfection. There's just so much attitude, personality, and uniqueness here that absolutely stands out in a gala. And that's it. This review either went really fast or I just did not spend as much time on these, but I am very excited to get into 2023 just to kind of wrap up this short and sweet Hellfire Gala series so that we can move on to a fighting game outfit stuff and probably more animes as we know. Obviously gonna get into all of that soon enough, but until the next video, I'll talk to you later.